So, a lot of places are currently on lockdown. Singapore is in its own version of lockdown. They call it a circuit breaker. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people are staying at home. They can't see, you know, their relatives, uh, friends. Uh, and yeah, you, you only get to go out for the essentials. Um, but one of the things to have come out of this uh, lockdown uh, is really the rise of video calls, all right? Or even group media calls. And one of the beneficiaries to this uh, is Zoom. Now, if you've never heard of the Zoom um, conferencing app before the pandemic, uh, I'm sure all almost everyone knows about it now. Uh, it has just gained popularity. Uh, a lot of people are using it to hold all sorts of um, group parties, chats and all that. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been really popular with a lot of people. Um, but with that popularity has come quite a bit of controversy uh, and articles coming out about the, the, the security vulnerabilities of Zoom. Uh, there are so many, but one of the more important ones is basically like in Singapore, uh, the MOE, which is the Ministry of Education, uh, they've actually uh, suspended the use of Zoom for all their home-based learning uh, of their students because there have been some hacks, uh, some obscene images and all that. Uh, and now like so MOE, the Singapore Ministry of Education has suspended it. You've got Google who suspended it. You've got NASA, you've got uh, what else? You've got the United States Senate, all right? The Australian Defense Force, just to name a few. Uh, they've all stopped using Zoom uh, because of its vulnerabilities. Now, recently, there was even an article published online uh, stating that some of the Zoom meeting of data traffic was actually being routed uh, to China. Uh, Zoom obviously said there was a mistake. Now, whether that was a mistake or not, I don't know, but these kind of things are, are, are really worrying. Now, I know despite this, um, a lot of people are still going to say, no, I still like using Zoom, it's fun. And yeah, I mean, I, I can see a lot of the benefits uh, to having Zoom. And if you're just having like a party with friends and all that, some of these uh, security vulnerabilities don't really bother a lot of people. And to be honest, uh, actually just a few days ago, I actually uh, had a Zoom drinking party with some of my friends that I usually hang out with. Uh, so yeah, we all got our own beers and our own locations. We went on a Zoom call and we were just chatting, playing around. Uh, and it was really, really fun. I mean, there are some features there like having a virtual background. Um, it's, it's really, really fun. You don't get that in other popular ones like Skype, uh, maybe even Microsoft Teams, although I believe Microsoft Teams is going to add that. Uh, but at the time of filming, I, I don't think that has been implemented yet. But other than that, yeah, I mean, Zoom is really, really fun. And the thing is that you can have um, up to like, I think it's like 50 uh, cameras on at the same time. You'll tile everyone up so you can actually see everyone. Uh, Skype doesn't work like that as well. So there are definitely benefits to this. So if you still want to use Zoom uh, for your parties or your group calls, and I still do as well, um, I'm going to list out four things that are really important and things that I would highly recommend that you guys do as well to make sure that your Zoom meetings uh, are safe and secure. Okay, so number one, all right, uh, it's really important. Now, when you go, when you schedule a meeting, you have uh, a lot of options, all right? The first option you're going to see, and it's really, really important, uh, is you have the choice to either use a unique ID that's generated for each call or to use the ID that is specific to you. Now, even though they have the function to have a specific ID, I always recommend generating one um, for every meeting. Now, one of the security vulnerabilities is the way that they generate uh, these meeting IDs. And a lot of these IDs can actually be found online through a simple Google search. Uh, or, I don't know about Google search, but a web search. Uh, and they found it, and that's how some of the hacks started. So what I would recommend is uh, use a unique ID every time. Uh, that way you lower the chance of your call being hacked. Okay, number two. Now, when you go to the advanced settings, um, when you schedule a meeting, you have a, a box next to the line that says enable waiting room. Now, I also highly recommend uh, enabling the waiting room. So what the waiting room does is anybody who joins the call, uh, apart from the host, will actually go into sort of like a lobby or a waiting room and the host has to let the person in. So how does this help? Basically, if you see someone in the call that you're like, no, this is not one of my friends. I've never seen this person in my life or I don't recognize the name. You can just don't let that person in. And again, so you don't get people trying to hack into your calls or going on and doing something wrong. Okay, number three. Now you can actually lock your meeting or your party 
uh, once you know that everyone is in. So for example, if you know that you invited 10 people and 10 people are already in the call, all you have to do is lock the meeting and if you lock the meeting, no one can join in, no one can hack into your meeting uh, and it makes things a lot better. Okay, and number four, right? This one, I would say is the most important. If you don't want to do the first three steps, at least do this one, all right? The fourth step is to set a password, all right? So what this means is that if you invite someone to that meeting, they can go in through the link, but they will need to enter a password first, okay? So you don't, this way, if you add a password, you don't get people uh, coming into your meeting unannounced when they're not supposed to be there. And of course, uh, use a proper password. Don't use like password or PA dollar sign dollar sign uh, as your password. Pick a good password. So those are my four steps to enable your Zoom call to be safe and secure. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop me an email. I'll put my email down in the description below. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so if you like this video, you know what to do. And I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP and I'll see you real soon.